Hi, everyone. My name is Kimi Kawashima. I'm Assistant Director of Music here at Westminster College. Um, we're so excited for you to be here for our first Musical Mentors, um, How to Shape Your Career, uh, your, your career Path. Um, I help with uh, recruitment and scholarships here at Westminster, as well as teach piano. Um, and as I just wrote in the chat, I invite you to write in any questions that you have um, through the live Q&A button. You'll see that there, um, a cute little um, call out button with a question mark. And we'd love to hear um, where you're from, what your name is, and what's a favorite song that you're listening to or singing right now. Um, so today we'll be talking about one of the most important relationships you can have as a musician, your musical mentor. Uh, we'll be chatting with Dr. Chris Puckett. Uh, he's Professor of Voice and Director of Vocal Studies here at Westminster, and Justin Ibarra, Junior Vocal Performance Major, um, and they're going to be discussing what it's like to be uh, studying here at Westminster. Um, before I turn it over to Justin and Chris, I just wanted to um, give a little uh, introduction and, and bio for, uh, for you all to hear what their amazing musical backgrounds are. Um, a native of Dayton, Ohio, Dr. Uh, Christopher Puckett is a tenor, and he's maintained an active career as both a performer and teacher over the last decade. Dr. Puckett made his professional debut as a member of the prestigious Young Artists Program at the Opera Theater of St. Louis, and has appeared in many, many performances from opera to oratorio. In 2016, he made his debut as the evangelist in Bach's St. Matthew Passion as a part of the ACDA National Conference in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, in addition to expertise in bar Baroque repertoire, Dr. Puckett is an ardent interpreter of the music of Benjamin Britten and also holds a particular interest in both the study and performance of the music of modern LGBTQ composers. As a teacher, Dr. Puckett uh, has taught extensively at both the private and collegiate level. Former students have gone on to performance careers at both the regional and national level, as well as careers in both music and theater education. Dr. Puckett holds a Doctor of Musical Arts uh, degree from the Conservatory of Music and Dance um, at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. And we are so fortunate to have him on our faculty um, working with our students. Uh, one of his students is Justin Ibarra. Justin was born and raised in Las Vegas, uh, and he has quickly evolved from a student to now a budding professional singer. Um, beginning his music education at the Las Vegas Academy of the Arts and International Studies, Justin pursued roles in a multitude of local Las Vegas musical theater productions, such as Billy Lawler in 42nd Street, Sebastian in Cinderella, and Mendel in, Mendel, Mendel in Fiddler on the Roof. While continuing his studies here at Westminster, he joined the ranks of the Utah Opera as a first year student and was cast as Dan in Westminster College's production of Next to Normal. To date, he has performed in productions of Silent Night, La Traviata, Did Zoboflota, I don't know if I said that right, but hopefully I did, uh, and Candide as a member of the Utah Opera Chorus. So we thought today we would start our program um, with a little demo of what a private voice lesson would be like here at Westminster uh, with Dr. Puckett and with Justin. So this kind of gives you a, a unique glimpse into what, um, what kind of work they do in their lessons and to see what the amazing rapport is between teacher and student. So Chris and Justin have graciously allowed us to kind of snoop in on what a lesson might be with them. So I'm going to turn it over now to Chris uh, to introduce. Well, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. This is really exciting um, and we're really excited to be part of this. Um, so what we're going to do here is just give you a little snippet of the kinds of things that we would do. Um, you know, this is basically like you're dropping into minute 21 of our of our 60 minute lesson. Um, the exercise we're going to talk that I'm going to do with Justin for a little bit will work on um, my favorite, which is a nine note scale. I often jokingly say to my students, this is what I do as a singer when 
I have to do the thing, but I'm tired and it's, I don't know if I want to do the thing, but I need to do the thing. So I do some nine note scales because it gets you through the whole range very, very quickly. And then Justin is going to perform a tiny bit of the aria Una Fortiva Lagrima from Donizetti's Elixir of Love, which he um, does beautifully. So why don't we go ahead and just jump over to Justin and get some singing done. All right, so. Yeah, let's do E flat major. And we're going to do um, on a going from an, a closed A vowel to the A ah vowel. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So you are having a little bit of analysis, analysis paralysis, as I like to say, on this yeah. first vowel. It's a little too heavy, and you're you're kind of in your head about what you want it to be. <laughs> Just say for me, say yay, 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 yay. Today, today. Would you speak more? Say today, today, today. Hey, 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 hey. Do you have a sensation of how that's much, much darker than what I'm demonstrating? I'm getting- Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It sits in the back more than uh, yeah. an actual residence place. You know what? What's what's uh, the vowel A's closest, brightest cousin? A e. 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 Give me an E vowel here. E-A-O. E-A-O. E. Ah. E. 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 Well, this is a hard no for some reason. E. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, come at it from a slightly higher position. Think about where you're headed. Headed to an F. We're headed to F on top of the staff, so you want to bring that space down with you, yeah? Good. Just for the purposes of today, let's switch things up. Give me an arpeggio. a a <laughs> wow, okay, got this. I got this. Oh, just oh, 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 oh. I'm nervous today. I'm so sorry. I think Zoom is a uh, worse than stage fright. I'm being honest with you. <laughs> you know what? What do we do? Okay, so that's a great point. What do we do when we're nervous? What do we do with stage fright? We acknowledge it. Yes. We honor it. We don't we don't shame it for having joined us. We welcome it because it means that we care. Yes, we do. Yeah? I want you to join me on what we were doing yesterday. Go. about this is just another day with just you and me. Just me and you. Right? Mm -hmm. Your E vowel is a little too dark and it's bringing you down just a tiny bit. Can you get on top of that vowel? Of course. E Do this for me. E <laughs> yeah, still a little higher. Go almost nasal. E there we go. Now bring that just a little bit up in your head. Good. Good, good. All right. We, we are, just for the purposes of time, can we jump to the aria? Nicely warmed up and I'm no longer nervous, so yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is an aria I like singing because I sang it too early in life. 
I sang this when I was a high school student at OVA, and hopefully if somebody from OVA is watching, you can hear the growth. <laughs> Justin. Thank and you so much. If, if I could just very quickly as we're moving on, if I could um, give a shout out to um, Professor Emily Williams, who is our fantastic coach accompanist, who recorded that track for Justin at the end of last semester. So we're great, very grateful for that as well in this in this time of difficult difficulty making live music. We're very grateful. <laughs> yes, it was a wonderful collaboration despite all of these challenges. Um, thank you guys for that amazing demonstration. Um, I thought I'd ask a couple of questions um, of Chris. Um, I know that, you know, as Justin is a vocal performance major, and um, I think it's worth noting how you also work with um, a variety of other kinds of singers at Westminster, um, ranging from music minors to theater majors to all kinds of other um, academic majors um, in private voice instruction. So what do you think are the benefits of private voice instruction and, and how do you work with singers from different backgrounds and interests? That's a really great question. Um, so I think the benefits are that private instruction is really for anybody who wants to improve what they're doing vocally. And most students that I get, regardless of background, usually tell me the same things. I want to be more confident. I want to, usually they want to increase their range. And usually those are the two things, uh, you know, among a, a myriad, a myriad other reasons that people take lessons. My philosophy of teaching is that I try to approach each student exactly where they are. Um, and usually that means I throw them in feet first at the beginning of a lesson and just say, here's, here's what I want you to sing, sing it back at me. And um, I have taught, you know, from people like Justin who, you know, I would never, I never sang that well when I was his age, <laughs> to people who've literally never sung before and are singing for me for the first time. But what I, how I approach each student and how I approach different styles is, um, I'm a firm believer in the tenets of the classical technique of what we call the bel canto technique, um, which is heavily focused on breath and vowel. We, you know, I firmly believe if breath is is breath is moving and vowel is and the vowel is pure and resonant, then we can make a lot of other stylistic choices. So I kind of approach everyone in that respect the same way, and then I find out what people are interested in. So, for example, I teach many theater students, and I work on adapting those techniques for a more theatrical style or a more contemporary style. You know, I've had several students who, I've had at least one student who wanted to learn how to scream in a rock band. And I said, okay, well, we're gonna start by learning how to scream like an opera singer and <laughs> then we'll go from there. So that's kind of how I approach, you know, people from all kinds, all, all over the place. And it's fun for me to have that, a variety of experience and style. That's wonderful. And I loved in your, your demonstration with Justin, how you 
said, okay, you know, there might be some nerves involved. That's natural. Let's acknowledge it. And, and, you know, how you can meet the student where they are. I think that's a really, that's a wonderful philosophy. So, I mean, if, if there are, what are the types of goals that you sort of set both short term and long term for singers, you know, who are moving from high school um, into, into college and as their voices change? Mm. Uh, a great question too. My number one um, goal is to find out what their goals are and to use those to help us set goal posts. So for someone like Justin, who, uh, for an, as an example, who very early on was what I would call, you know, a career line singer who both has expressed the interest in pursuing the career, but also, in my opinion, has the goods already. You know, we set very optimistic and very serious goals and work very hard to, to meet them. But sometimes I will, I, you know, I've had singers at the collegiate level who a realistic goal for us is by the end of this semester, by the end of 14 weeks, I want to be able to sing a five note scale reliably in eight keys, you know, and that's where they come in. And if that's the goal, that's fantastic. So the number one goal again is to kind of figure out where we're starting and where we, where is feasible to go in a short term. My long term goal for every student is for me to become obsolete. Um, I believe in learning to sing by feel. I believe in not listening and trusting the resonance because our ears are too close and our ears are too emotional. And my goal is for them to be able to sing and say, no, my palate wasn't lifted and my tongue was retracted and me to not have to say that. And then it's time, you know, either for them to move to the next step in their education or um, eventually out into the world and to do, do their own thing. Awesome, thank you. Um, I'd like to ask Justin a couple questions. Um, Justin, talk a little bit about your transformation as a singer um, and musician at Westminster um, and how that has related to your work with Dr. Puckett. I, I started singing uh, when I was 16, like actually singing because my choir teacher thought I had a good voice, so private lessons. And I realized it was kind of like the only thing I actually enjoyed about school which was go, going to school and singing. And then when I found out about Westminster through a friend who was already going here, I sent in my application and I got, you know, feedback really, really, really quickly. And it was beautiful to see that a college actually takes an interest in somebody. And then when I got here, I was nervous, of course, but not, as soon as I met Chris, I like, kind of went away. And actually, as soon as I met you, Kimmy, that went away as well. <laughs> um, because there's so much humanity at this school. There's, uh, I've never felt as if, even though you all are more knowledgeable than me and like at greater places than I am uh, with technique and music and everything, I've never felt as though anybody in this faculty has looked down upon me, you know? It, it's quite literally like a mentorship over a hierarchy of education, which I enjoy a lot. And something I didn't really realize about singing is <laughs> the instrument we have is so personal. And <laughs> when I first started lessons, uh, receiving criticism was incredibly difficult. I would like cry, I, I, I'd cry. And it, it felt as though I was doing something wrong with my voice because I wasn't in places that seniors were or professionals were and then with chris's guidance i kind of learned that my voice is unique and beautiful and that it's okay to sound like how i sound you know i don't have to sound dramatic i don't have to sound big i just have to sound like me and the more i look at professionals and the more i look at anybody who's happy and successful they've realized that they've realized that all they have to do is be honest to themselves and honest to their instrument and that's truly the basis of healthy singing and a healthy relationship with your mentor is and i really appreciate that about this school and it's given me that and i've also grown a lot educationally of course <laughs> well it's obvious just hearing you i mean what you know it's it it's a lot of work and uh, and the dedication that you've shown um to 
stay at it and and grow as a musician is is really remarkable. And it's just I love hearing you sing. So, what were some of your worries going into college? Um, you know, what were some of your questions and trepidations? If if I'm gonna be if I'm gonna be completely honest, one of my worries was kind of just like, what am I gonna expect? Um, oh, I'm a first generation college student, so in my head, the only memories of college and or like the only thing I can imagine college being like is what I saw on the media or what I saw on TV and film or books or what people tell me. And when I went to Westminster, it, none of those. It wasn't a big, huge party school. There wasn't that diva tenor or diva anybody to like, oh, you're new, you suck. There wasn't any of that. It wasn't, there's, I've never felt as if I'm in competition with anyone at the school. And I think that's beautiful because music in itself shouldn't be a competition. It's, it's, it's art, you know, that we're sharing our expressions, sharing our emotions. And I was really worried that I'd, find that I'd find that competition that exists everywhere in music you know but when I walk into Westminster it's uh like a little uh Switzerland a little little neutral zone you know a little <laughs> it, it's perfect it's uh it, it's fantastic I love it yeah it does look more like that now with the snow doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> um thank you well I thought I'd um ask a question of Chris um you know, thinking about Justin and his involvement with um, Utah Opera as, you know, I, we could call it maybe as like a paid internship and for him to jump into something like that as a first year student. Um, what are some other achievements you can share about Justin and um, and how did those opportunities help him, you know, grow as a singer and towards his career? Uh, well, first of all, um, I'm going to we need to add to your bio um that not only have you sung with Utah Opera in four productions but you made your featured role debut in Silent Night you were what Scottish Soldier 2 is that your number one okay um it, this is a, a contemporary opera Pulitzer Prize winner from 2012 um based on the Christmas Eve truce uh, at the beginning of World War One and it has a smattering of smaller roles uh, which Justin was heavily featured as a soloist, which particularly for his age, I was both extremely proud and extremely annoyed because no, there's no competition in music, but you know, there always is a little, I'm, I'm totally teasing, of course. Uh, incredibly proud of him for that. Um, gosh, you won, you won Nats, you won your, you won your category in Nats my first year here, your first year here. Um, you have been in really close contention for several really high profile things. I mean, you were down to the wire in, the, in, in, an, in several rounds of auditions at the Hale, which um, if you're familiar with Utah theater, even getting past round one at the Hale is a big deal. Um, geez, wonder, I, I mean, you, uh, oh, that's right. We took, you got to go to Flagstaff, Arizona to sing for a group of donors. You also were uh, chosen to sing at the, um, at the groundbreaking of the addition to our building. Um, and, you know, it's a really unfortunate timing for all of us pursuing this career right now, you know, with the pandemic and everything. But um, I can only imagine that once this is over, you're gonna be able to drop right back in and, and continue the, the momentum you've built up here uh, and, and, and onward. But, oh, you've also been, you know, you've gotten to sing for some really fantastic people. You sang for JJ Penna, who's a coach at the Juilliard School. Um, you sang for Megan Marino, a world famous mezzo-soprano who was in town came and did a master class for us. So a lot to pack into two and a half years, but he's doing great. <laughs> That's fabulous. Um, so as you know, a lot of the, the students out there probably listening right now are in the midst of, of auditioning or thinking about auditioning for um, some kind of performing arts scholarship. So uh, Chris, what are you looking for in a great audition um, and how can you advise students to prepare for that and and through this college process? Sure. My number one piece of advice within the within the parameters set out for you by the audition panel. So if the, if we say we want to hear one foreign language and one English, start with what 
you sing the best. I know that sounds like really basic advice, but I'm guilty of it too. Of You know, you go into an audition and you're like, well, so-and-so has heard me sing blah, blah, blah already. Matters not. Sing what you sing the best. Always start with your strongest piece. Um, and that is half the battle because we may not remember, to be perfectly frank, um, we may remember you from having heard you two years ago, but we may not remember what you sang. So always start with what's best. I am looking for, I am not looking for perfection by any stretch of the imagination. I am looking for potential. I am looking for preparation. Um, know what you're singing. And it's more than, it's more than just, if you've got one of the Italian arias, it's more than just memorizing the rhyming translation. It's more than just even memorizing the poetic translation. Really know what you're singing and let it mean something to you. Um, I tell this story way too often, I think, and my students are going to, Justin will probably roll his eyes, but my coach in my doctorate, who is somewhat, one of the most responsible people for who I am as a teacher and a performer, always used to say to me, used to pull me aside before anything and say, well, you got two jobs. Sing the music and tell the story. Not sing the notes and not sing the words, but sing the music and tell the story. I repeat this to myself every time I sing in public because it's the most important thing that you can do. And you're not too, I know you're all just starting out in, in college, you know, but you're not too young to start, to start thinking about that because that's more important than perfection. A boring, perfect performance is much less interesting than a somewhat flawed performance that is truly, truly felt. So do your homework, know your text, and above all, do not let, your, let yourself forget that singing or whatever type of music you do, it's fun. It's supposed to be fun. And yes, there are serious moments like auditions, but if you're not at some level enjoying it, then what is really the point? And if you're enjoying giving your audition, I promise you we're going to enjoy watching it. That is so true. And, you know, I think we can all, um, it's, it's interesting being on that side of the panel just to see when somebody is just excited to share a, a song that they love or, you know, when I was, personalize it. When I was out in the world auditioning more than I was, you know, mostly freelancing and people used to say to me, they just want you to sing well, they want you to be what they want. I used to roll my eyes. Being on the other side of the panel, we just want you to sing well. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's nothing more uncomfortable than when it's not going well. We love when it's going well. <laughs> so really no one's out to get you. We want we want it to be a, a, a really, and at Westminster, of course, I think especially, there's an air in the room of like encouragement. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, speaking of that, since we're almost running out of time a little bit, um, I, I did want to mention to all of you out there, um, we are still accepting um, auditions, um, audition videos now, and um, I, I'm happy to set up any kind of virtual lessons, as you can see, um, in order to work with one of our faculty. Um, that's a great way to ask questions and just to see what kind of rapport you can have um, with our wonderful faculty. Um, I'm excited to share uh, some great plans for us in the fall for our performing arts uh, division. Uh, we have an amazing edition um, that's set to be completed by fall 2021, um, which is going to add some new practice rooms, a new dance facility, um, a new smaller recital hall, and um, just it, it kind of embraces all of all of the arts that are happening here at Westminster. So that's going to be a really exciting groundbreaking that's going to happen in September. Um, we have Luckily for music, we have um, lots of scholarships to award to music majors, minors, um, as well as some active participants. And I encourage all of you to, uh, even if you're not sure what kind of involvement you want to have in music, to um, reach out and, and uh, even once you get here to sign up for lessons um, or ensembles and your participation is always welcome. Um, do you guys have anything you want to add, Justin or Chris? Yeah, Justin, go for it. Uh, real quick, I never talked about the education I received. 
<laughs> Education, when I came, yes. <laughs> when, I, when I came to the school, I, I was actually really worried about um, where I stood with music theory and sight singing and, you know, all the all the all the science and the the not so fun stuff about music, which now I actually enjoy, which is something that I only attribute to this school because the class sizes are so tiny, especially for um, the arts. The, the the class sizes are just it feels as though each course is a private lesson, which is which is really nice. And I can actually learn that way. When I, when I came to Westminster, I could barely even read. Like I, I actually no, I couldn't read my keys. I didn't know what my keys were, and now I am fairly proficient in what I'm learning. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. I now actually enjoy school, which I didn't in the past. Sorry, Miss Frankie, if you're watching. <laughs> and that's it. And so, did you feel like? Have you been feeling like now you can see the connections between? your practice in theory and how that helps with your singing and yeah. definitely definitely i i never I, I knew theory was important but i never got the why you know it was it was kind of like eat your vegetables because they're good for you but um now i can really now that i love music i want to know everything about it like like when you fall in love with anything you you you, you become obsessed a little bit and that's I think why I love Westminster so much because it helped me love music more. And now I love even the nerdy stuff about it. So that's cool. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's wonderful. And I think thank you for emphasizing that, that we um, our small class sizes really do help you explore, um, you know, different facets that you might not have known you would enjoy because you have that opportunity to ask specific questions or to get kind of um, directed help with with areas that you might not be familiar with. Um, well, this has been a, a really a great um, chat with you guys. Thank you so much, uh, Chris Puckett and Justin Ibarra for um, sharing your experience at Westminster and, and letting us all know what great work you do. Um, I'm really glad to see my colleague uh, Harrison Casper, who's also on this call. And he is the admissions counselor for the performing arts. Uh, so anytime you have any questions about the application process, um, feel free to uh, contact Harrison. The application process this year, I have to say, is really outstanding. Um, you can use the Common app to upload your app if you haven't already, um, or there's a new application process through um, our website. And I do want to emphasize that we are test optional this year. So um, feel free to just upload your transcripts, reach out to Harrison with any questions, and feel free to contact me. Um, and I'll put my email in the chat if you have any questions about the audition process or about scholarships um, or that preview lesson um, at Westminster. So anyway, it's been a wonderful evening. I want to hear Justin sing more, but you guys are just going to have to come to Westminster to hear him. So anyway, <laughs> thank you all so much um, and uh, look forward to hearing from you. Bye.